Happy birthday to you. They waited and waited and waited, but then it happened. A savior was born, hope was rekindled, and a light shone in the darkness, and the world was never the same again. The time had come. Let us rejoice. Christ is born. Well, Merry Christmas. We want to thank you for joining us this Christmas day. Wherever you are and whenever you are watching this, we are so glad that you have chosen to worship with us this day as we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Caleb Henry, and here at Oxford United Methodist Church, we are a Christ-centered, scripture-based, intercultural, intergenerational, intentional, and caring connection in everything we do from our missions to our children's ministries, from our worship on Sunday mornings, to anything that we do in the community is done with those six values firmly in our minds and in our hearts. And so this morning, we would invite you to visit and learn more about those values here at Oxford United Methodist Church by going to our website, which is www.oumc.org. Again, that is www oumc.org. On there you will find all sorts of information about various ministry events and opportunities that are happening here at Oxford United Methodist Church, but you can also learn more about our values and how we view our mission here at Oxford United Methodist Church. We believe firmly that our mission is to make disciples for the transformation of the world, and we do everything we can from our services here inside this building to our service out in the community to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to everybody. Well, let us get into our worship this morning by celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ with our call to worship. Please respond with me in the bolded print. Jesus Christ is born today. Alleluia. We have seen his glory the glory as of God's only begotten, full of grace and truth. How great our joy. Jesus Christ is born today. Alleluia.
Good morning and Merry Christmas. I thought that since this Sunday we are all staying home in our jammies to celebrate Christmas with our families instead of meeting in person, that I would stay in my jammies and hang out by my tree and we could read a story together. This is the story of the very first Christmas. And something you need to know is that before this story takes place, Mary has become pregnant with Jesus, the Son of God. On Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And this is the Christmas story. Many years ago, a man named Joseph and his wife Mary lived in Nazareth. And one day they had to take a trip. Mary rode on a donkey while Joseph walked by her side. They came to a town called Bethlehem. They looked for a place to sleep, but there were so many people that there was no room for Mary and Joseph. Finally, an innkeeper said that they could stay in his stable Joseph made a soft bed for Mary, and they lay down to sleep. During the night, Mary's baby was born. She wrapped him in soft cloths and laid him in the manger. She called him Jesus. In a field not far away, Shepherds were watching their sheep. Suddenly an angel appeared and the shepherds were afraid. The angel said, do not be afraid. I have good news. A savior has been born in Bethlehem. You will find him lying in a manger. Then there were many angels. They said, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill toward men. After the angels left, the shepherds ran to Bethlehem. They were looking for the savior. When the shepherds found the manger, they worshiped the baby Jesus. This is the Christmas story. Jesus Christ, our savior, was born in Bethlehem and found lying in a manger. This story is so important as Christians, people who go to church, because it tells us about the story of Jesus Christ, our savior, our king, the most important guy in our lives, and his super humble beginnings, being born in a stable with like animals, donkeys and animals around him. They found him lying there. But the shepherds and us, we know that that truly was the son of God because angels came to tell the shepherds that day. I hope you guys have a very Merry Christmas at home with your families today. Would you now join me in the prayers of the people? Oh God, you are never revealed so completely as in the face of the child of Bethlehem. Hear us as we give thanks for those who today reveal your love in our world by his spirit. We pray for those who give you hands by doing their best toward their brothers and sisters. For those who give you a mouth by speaking words of justice and peace for the broken and oppressed. For those who give your poverty the look of hope for your reign, revealing you simply by being your children, reflecting your beauty as did your only son, Jesus. We hold up in prayer the lonely and hurting, the hungry and homeless, the sick and dispossessed, knowing that your heart has always been nearest to those who are poor in spirit 
and least likely to be thought of as people touched by the hand of God. As we remember how you came to live among us in the flesh, and as we celebrate that moment long ago which lives forever in the hearts of those who believe, and as we long for your fullness in our lives that we too might enflesh the goodness and love of Jesus Christ in our day, we ask that you would bless us, your church, to be food for the hungry and hope for those who are lost and alone, a living testament of Christ's faithfulness to you. May all who drink of your one spirit receive new life to give to those in our world who are thirsty for meaning and belonging. Lord, pour out your spirit upon us, your people. Continue in our lives the mystery of Christmas. Let your Son become flesh in us, so that we may reveal you to our world all the days of our lives. Holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today, as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture reading for today comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. I will be reading from the New International Version. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Now, in that same region, there were shepherds living in the fields. My favorite role when I was a child in the nativity scene was playing one of the shepherds. Like, the wise men were second fiddle to the shepherds, and there was no worse role, particularly for a boy, than to play Joseph. You just knew that you were going to be embarrassed by your brothers or your friends if you had to play Joseph. But undoubtedly, the best role was to be one of the shepherds. And every year as we come to Christmas, I wonder about the shepherds. Like, why shepherds? Why are they in this story? How did they end up here? Was the angel just too tired of flying far enough to go to other people that the angel just had to stop with the shepherds because they happened to be living in the fields in the same region as where Mary and Joseph were? Like, why did they end up in this story? And perhaps it's due to this interesting fact about shepherds. Number one, shepherd's testimony was not permitted in a court of law. They were deemed untrustworthy people. They were unsavory characters. And so it's fascinating to me that God would use people who are deemed untrustworthy, whose testimony would not hold up in a court of law to spread the good news of Jesus Christ first. I mean, think of that. Why would God choose these people? And what it reminds us of, I think, more than anything, is the power of the good news of, of Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ brings to all people in this world. Is that God often chooses those the world deems unworthy to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, to not only receive that good news first, but then to have the holy responsibility to take that good news to all people. See, the light of Christ often shines brightest for those who are broken and despised or looked down upon in this world. Is this about preferential treatment? No. If God has any uh, preference, it's, it's a preference towards freedom. And God wants to bring freedom to those who are oppressed or who are in bondage. But I think the reason why the light of Christ shines brightest for those who are broken or despised is because they understand the power of God's grace, that they have nothing to offer. The world doesn't look highly upon them, and they might not look highly upon themselves, but they know that there is hope in God, that if there's anyone that loves them, it's got to be God. Friends, on this Christmas Day, we are given this great opportunity to share a message of hope with people. And the story of the shepherds reminds us that God entrusts us with this message regardless of who you are. You might not think that you are all that in a bag of chips. You might not think that you are worthy of this great gospel of Jesus Christ. 
But this message does not depend upon you, for it depends solely upon the power of God. This is why Paul can say in Romans chapter 1, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. We should not this day be ashamed of this message of hope. And we certainly should not be ashamed of ourselves because God certainly is not ashamed of us. God proves this to us in the birth of Jesus Christ. God would not have entered our world this way by becoming vulnerable, by being born as a baby into such a dark world where all kinds of bad things happen, God would not have done that if God was ashamed of us. No, the reason why God came into the world is that because of God's great love for us, God couldn't resist it one second longer. God had to be with us. And so, friends, let us take that message today to heart. And may that message nourish our spirits with great joy, unspeakable joy, a joy that is unto the world, that we might share this message of hope with others. Because if God wasn't ashamed to use shepherds to spread this good news, God certainly is not ashamed of us to spread this message as well. But in order for us to spread this message of hope, we first must have it implanted into our hearts. So friends, hear the good news this day. Jesus Christ is born. Alleluia. Once again, we want to thank you for joining us for worship today on this most holy days where we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. My hope and prayer is that for all of us, the Christ candle, which is lit for us, would be lit inside of our hearts, not just for this day, but for each and every day and forevermore. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, for silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens, there shone a holy Go tell it on the mountain, 
Shepherds fear and tremble, men low above the earth. Bring out the angel chorus that hail the Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born. And God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. That Jesus Christ is born. That Jesus Christ is born.